during the live stream meeting. Hello, everyone. We are going to give it a few more minutes uh, to let others join, and then we will get started. Okay, so it is now 12.04 and we wanna make sure that we have ample time for um, our experts on here to share the information and talk about uh, zoning and why it's important. So we are going to go forth. My name is Larisha Harris. I'm the South Coast Advocate with 100 Miles. Also coming before you today will be Hannah Mandillo. She is the Coastal Planning Advocate and the executive director for 100 Miles, Megan DeRosiers. She's also going to be um, sharing some information about zoning with us today. Thank you, ladies, for being on here and sharing your expertise and your knowledge. Um, but before we get going um, into the purpose for today's teach-in, I uh, want to let you know that 100 Miles is a non-governmental organization based here in Brunswick, Georgia. Our mission is to preserve and protect Georgia's 100 mile coast through education, advocacy, and community engagement. And the comments that you will hear today and also read today are our beliefs. Um, we are sharing the purpose of zoning and why we feel like it's important for you to be involved and why a person should be um, heavily you know, into this entire process. So making sure you have a clear understanding of zoning um, and again, why you should be involved because it is one of the most important policies that are in place uh, that will determine the future of our community. And it really and truly impacts every aspect of our daily lives. It's really the essential blueprint for our economic growth and the quality of life for years and years to come. And so now I'd like to um, make sure that you all know we will have a period for questions at the end of our teach-in today. Um, so we are excited about this. It's our very first teach-in and we will continue to have more of these um, on various topics, but we will have a portion for questions. So if you have any questions, just drop them in the comment area um, on our Facebook Live and we will make sure and try our best to get those answered for you all. So to progress on forward, I'd like to bring in our executive director, Megan, for us to get started with the importance of zoning and why um, you should know more about it and be involved. Thank you. Thanks, Larisha. Hi, everybody. Um, as Larisha said, my name is Megan DeRosiers. Um, I have a background in land use policy and um, in a previous life was very heavily involved in zoning ordinances in other parts of the Southeast. Um, zoning is something that people kind of like glaze over when they hear the word because it seems maybe boring or wonky or maybe something that doesn't relate to you. And I think Larisha did a good job of making uh, you all um, understand or ex communicating why we should care about zoning. But really, I just want to share with you kind of the four purposes of zoning. Um, and so essentially, 
it does four things. And those are the things that help us have a better quality of life. First, it divides land into designated regions or zones, each of which corresponds to a geographic area of the zoning map. So the map I have here is the future land use map in the county that then translates into a zoning map. And that zoning that is assigned um, specifies what type of structures can or cannot be built within each zone. It prescribes limits on the size and dimensions of each structure, as well as the density by zone. And very importantly, it defines the process by which local governments grant permission for new development. So the next slide actually summarizes this. And it says that, um, can you switch to the next slide? Oh yeah, thank you. Um, it says that zoning leads to predictable expectations and outcomes for people and communities related to land development. Why 100 Miles works on zoning is because every week, people in our local governments, whether it's city commissions or county commissions, are making decisions about our landscape and about our communities. And we want those predictable outcomes to be uh, predictable for, yes, people who live here, also for our wildlife habitat and for um, issues of conservation that we care so much about. Um, and really, very simply, it boils down to two things. One is development in the right places, and then development in the right patterns. And so now I'm gonna turn it over to Hannah to kind of walk you through the zoning map. Hey, yeah, so like Megan said, zoning gives the community and local government control over how our built environment looks and how it interacts with our natural environment. The Georgia Zoning Procedures Law gives local governments the authority to implement zoning and use it to manage development activities. Um, and the building blocks of zoning will be found in the county's comprehensive plan. Comprehensive plans are a way for local governments to set a vision for the character of the community and the goals and actions they will use to get there. Comprehensive plans are also required by the state for the county to receive important state funding. Anytime a zoning decision is made, elected officials have to determine if it is in line with the vision and the goals of the comprehensive plan. Glenn County released their updated comprehensive plan in October of 2023. So what we're looking at here is the current zoning map for Glenn County, and it separates the county into corresponding zones, and each zone has their own requirements for building standards and land use. Now, how do we actually read a zoning map? So I've zoomed into the key and the portion of the previous map to make it easier to see. If you look towards the center right in that right uh, upper white right quadrant of the map, it's the Notting Hill West subdivision, and you can see it's covered in this chartreuse yellow green color, color with the blue water body in the center. Um, and then we can then go over to the key and see that this corresponds to the R21 family residential zone. From there, we would look at the zoning code which can be found on the county's website to know that this particular zone, what the particular zoning requirements are for that area. For example, R20 is going to allow single family dwellings with a maximum of two houses per acre and you wouldn't be able to keep livestock or poultry there. Great, Great. thank you, Hannah. Um, this is a, the, the, the um, the zoning map is especially important when you think about um, how people choose where they're going to live and what type of community they want to live in. And so those predictable expectations are super important. And so I wanna just start um, to dive into the draft zoning ordinance by just talking to you a little bit about development in the right places. So um, when we think of development, we think of it in terms of rural landscapes versus suburban and urban landscapes. And um, my section of this presentation really deals with development in the rural places. And so it's really important when you think about rural areas to remember that they provide farmland, they provide timber, they provide recreational opportunities like hunting, fishing, and hiking. Um, they provide wildlife habitat and clean water, and they provide quiet living for people who don't wanna live in um, highly traveled or highly uh, developed areas. But from a county's perspective, rural areas are important, not just because of the diversity of uses that rural areas provide, but also because they um, help counties 
maintain their fiscal resources in a responsible way. So rural development has less impact on roads, it has less impact on sewer and water, has less impact on schools. And so as you think about a community planning process and how counties have to spend taxpayer dollars, knowing that a place is gonna remain rural helps them concentrate the taxpayer dollars into other places that are gonna be need to, excuse me, that are gonna require more services from the community. Um, okay, next slide, please. So um, in the draft zoning ordinance, the rural the uh, rural zoning that covers most of the western part of Glynn County and the north end of St. Simons um, is called uh, forest agriculture. It's called the forest agriculture base zoning. And the purpose in the draft zoning ordinance is to ensure that land in Glynn County can be utilized and reserved for some of those uses I mentioned before, agriculture, residential, recreation. Um, and it's to encourage the formation and continuance of a compatible environment um, for all these things, public and recreational areas, agricultural uses, and it is to discourage any encroachment by incompatible housing developments or commercial or industrial operations to people who have moved out to the rural area. Again, like I said, because they prefer that quality of life. Go to the next slide. We agree with all of that, by the way. The issue that we have with the draft zoning ordinance is that the applicability of that, um, of those goals, of those um, uses that the county says they want to uh, preserve is that it's inconsistent with those uses. So essentially the density in the forest agriculture area that the draft zoning ordinance assigns is two units per acre. Go to the next slide, please. That's what it looks like. So if the rural area of our county um, which is West Glen County, west of 95 and north end of St. Simons, was developed at two units per acre, this is what it would look like. Um, these are developments, real developments in Glen County that are zoned for two units to the acre, and this is what they look like. One from an aerial photograph, and then this is uh, down here on the um, on the uh, bottom right is, is what the street view would look like. Go to the next slide. So when you look at the rural areas of our county, this is what they are um, in the zoning map. Um, you can see, um, you can't, uh, I can't use my cursor here, but it's the green color on the west side of um, Glynn County. And then it's also the green color on the north end of St. Simon. So you can see where the word German village is and then up um, near Hampton Point and near Cannons Point. So that's where the FA zoning is. Go to the next slide, please. So if we develop, that area in the west part of the county, just for example, I picked um, one property owner. So all of the highlighted properties in the west area of the county is owned by one property owner, that's Warehouser, which is a paper company. Um, that's 55,000 acres. If they developed just with what they're allowed to do by right, which is two units per acre, um, that would be um, 112,000 acres of property would result in 224,000 homes. And that's in the western part of the county where the county isn't planning for significant growth. Go to the next slide, which is a map of the north end of St. Simons. And we did the same analysis for that. If all of these um, properties, which I'm sorry, it's confusing because now they're a different color, but the, it's the brown, copy, the brown color now. Um, if they developed at two units per acre, that's approximately 920 acres, which would lead to about 1,800 new homes on St. Simons, where, again, on the north end, they're not prepared for the growth. So you think about the impact of that on the schools, on the roads, on the sewer and water infrastructure, which, again, do not have plans for that type of growth. Go to the next slide, please. So our recommendation is, regarding the FA zoning, assign a density that makes sense, assign a density for that area that actually allows people to um, subdivide or build as they like, but make the density consistent with rural uses, which would be five to 10 acres, sorry, five to 10 units per acre. Um, no, that's, I'm sorry, that's backwards. It should say five to 10 um, acres. What does, go back, sorry. It's not five to 10 units per acre, it's five to 10 acres per unit. So that's a, a typo on the slide that's pretty significant. Um, so that's one unit per five to 10 acres. So a lot would be either five acres or a lot would be 10 acres. And this is what it looks like. Um, so you can see the street view, you can see the aerial view, you can see that it's a lot more consistent with um, rural zoning. Go to the next slide. Thank you.
Um, so the so the second part of the rural is what if somebody does want to do a development in a rural area? Well, um, in the zoning ordinance, they actually have a conservation subdivision district, which um, essentially what a conservation subdivision does is um, it's a growth management tool that protects ecologically sensitive areas from high density development. So you can see the development on the left is not a conservation subdivision, it's a conventional subdivision. And the development on the right would be considered a conservation subdivision. You can see that it maximizes green space. Um, and the value of the conservation subdivision is allow for development in rural areas while maintaining, con connect while maintaining connections for wildlife, recreation, and other ecosystem values throughout the landscape. They should not be thought of just from the perspective of the individual property, but they need to be thought of as connected to the landscape that we're trying to preserve. Um, conservation subdivisions are more valuable in rural are areas than they are in urban or suburban areas because of the maximized green space. Go ahead to the next slide, please. So our recommendation really relates to conservation subdivisions and planned developments in um, the rural area. So right now in the zoning ordinance, a person could do a planned development in the rural area that goes up to a density much higher than two units per acre. So if the county is really serious about preserving the rural area of the community for agriculture, recreation, hunting, fishing, hiking, all of those things that we said before, then we really need to look at those planned developments and um, you know, it may be too late for these circled here, but in the future when any new plan developments are granted, then let's think about requiring them to be conservation subdivisions. So please go to the next slide. Um, so our recommendation here is that conservation subdivisions should be the only plan development options within the FA base zoning, only allow conservation subdivisions in areas with a PD base zoning, um, which that's the, um, uh, and conservation subdivision zoning should be used to preserve rural places that do not need sewer and water. Um, and we would like to see them increase the minimum amount of conservation area within a development from 30% to 50%. Currently, the zoning ordinance says that there has to be 30% of green space. We'd like that to be increased to 50%. So please um, go to the next slide. And now it's Hannah's turn. Yeah, thank you, Megan. Now that we've heard about some of the concerns regarding our rural sections of the county, we can pivot to our more urban and suburban areas. And these areas are going to be characterized by subdivisions, infill, infill development, planned parks and recreation, think like the North Glen Recreation Complex. Um, this is where the majority of people are going to live. Uh, they're going to be on public water Houses are closer together, larger stores like big box stores, but it, we'll also see our local and small businesses here as well. And for our urban and suburban areas, we want to encourage the idea of complete streets. Um, and complete streets is an approach to planning, design, urban, or designing, building, operating, and maintaining our streets and roadways in a manner that enables safe access for all people who need to use them, including pedestrians, bicyclists, motorists, and transit riders of all ages and abilities. Um, take a moment to think about if your child can safely bike to school, how long would it take? Could you walk to the grocery store? How long would that take? Are there sidewalks in your neighborhood? Are there bike lanes? Are there trees to provide shade? Or would you have to be in the sun the whole time? Are there any benches to stop and take breaks? If it rains, will the streets flood and you won't be able to get anywhere? All of these questions are considered and included in complete street designs. Beyond the convenience of complete streets, investing in our transit infrastructure has other benefits. Studies have shown that communities that implement complete street designs are see a 50% decrease in cyclist injury and crash risk. Complete street designs can help more vulnerable populations, such as those with mobility or vision mobility or vision impairments. Um, they have safer access to grocery stores and community gathering centers. Currently, Americans spend upwards of 18 cents of every dollar on transportation. Investing in infrastructure that provides a safe and free way to travel lessens these financial burdens on residents. 
And so complete streets can mean a lot of things. It's green infrastructure, it's nature-based solutions, um, it's being able to walk to the grocery store or to work without having to cross a major roadway. It's also just simply better street design. So in these renderings, you can see that a bike lane has been added along a road. Uh, the bike lane might be a little different than some of the ones we're used to seeing, especially here in Glen County. Uh, this one is very clearly marked with that green paint and um, the street dividers. It's wide enough for two bikes to be going in opposite directions. The grass median and the trees provide safety to the cyclists, but it also provides an aesthetic quality that makes the neighborhood more attractive. And our recommendations for complete streets um, for this new zoning update is to adopt a county-wide complete streets ordinance that provides more opportunities for safe cycling and walking, continue to expand the non-motorized transportation network of Glen County, and particularly on the mainland work to connect existing infrastructure to commercial centers. Collaborate with local organizations such as Bike Walk Golden Isles to develop a countywide master trails plan which would serve to provide clear direction to the public and its elected officials to invest in future trail connections while fostering additional funding opportunities to expand the trail network. And really everything that we've talked about today, complete streets, rural character preservation, conservation subdivisions, are intended to improve the quality of life and overall health of the Glen County community. Often when we think of zoning, we think of it as government decisions that tell us how far away our houses have to be from one another. But it's so much more than that. Zoning affects your ability to grow food on your property, your access to wildlife and beaches where your kids can play and fish, how you get to spend time with your family, where you get to exercise. It affects your proximity to industrial developments and pollution. And that's why it's so important that residents of Glen County feel empowered to engage in, local, in the local zoning process to preserve or improve your way of life. So now we would like to open it up for questions um, that we may have received during our Facebook, um, on our Facebook comments. And there was one question that we had, ladies, the question is about conservation subdivision. Um, and it says, is that meant to be cleared land in the conservation subdivision illustration? If so, what is the benefit of cleared space to forested regions? Good question. So I took a, um, a rendering from a new, a different community in, I think it's in Connecticut. Um, and just to show you how the homes would be clustered to a certain portion of the development and the remainder of the development would be open space. It's not meant to be, it could be any kind of open space um, aside from a golf course. We don't want golf courses in the rural area, but it could be forest, it could be farm, it could be wildlife habitat. It doesn't, it, it, I didn't mean to imply that it needed to be cleared, but good, good question for sure. Okay, and um, thank you, Megan, for that clarification. Um, so Hannah mentioned so much. Megan also mentioned um, a lot during this presentation, and we know that this is a lot to comprehend. So if you have any other questions or you would like to see or read more about the Glen County Zoning Draft Ordinance that's actually underway now, you can always visit our um our website, 100miles.org slash Glenn dash zoning. Then you'll see our recommendations. You can also find there the most recent draft ordinance that is also um, linked to the county webpage. And you'll be able to see a full list of our recommendations and some of the concerns that we had regarding the zoning draft ordinance. We have a few more questions here. Um, one question says, I called the county and was told there is no scheduled meeting for the rewrite. Is that true? As of right now, there has not been any update regarding the next meeting. Um, there was a previous meeting that was held back in um, end of January, and they were working on a new draft that would be posted to the website so that 
residents and county members can see the progress that was made from the previous draft ordinance. Um, so the current, the most recent draft ordinance that you'll see online now is from January 3rd. It's a red line, which outlines some of the changes. So they are making another draft ordinance, which will show more changes to, um, or more changes that have been made to the draft ordinance. Uh, the next question that we see is, is the meaning of a conservation subdivision formally defined? or is it different across different municipalities nationwide? Uh, good question. Again, um, conservation subdivision is a planning tool that you know planners learn about and they um, can implement them. There are different, just like any kind of technical, um, I don't know, technical field of um, study or field of career, um, different people interpret things different ways. A conservation subdivision, just like any kind of zoning, can be implemented through a zoning ordinance however any community wants to do it. So there is like Hannah's a, a she's officially a planner. She has in her mind and she's maybe been taught what a conservation subdivision does or is, but that doesn't mean that the city she works for agrees with her or will do it the way that she wants it to be done. Um, so that's why it's very important for us to define what it means for ourselves and for our own community. And it's why it's really important for people to participate in this process. Um, the other thing I wanted to just say and apologize for is the typo on the slide regarding forest agriculture. So to be clear, our position is that in forest agriculture, the density should be one unit per five acres or one unit per 10 acres. Um, and that preserves the rural character of the area. Thank you, Megan, for that clarification um, and, and helping people to understand um, the or understand if their uh, conservation subdivision is formally defined. Thank you for that. Um, again, if you would like to read more about um, the recommendations that 100 miles submitted to those who are responsible for the draft ordinance, please head over to our website. The webpage is displayed here for you. There you will find the letter that was submitted. And also you'll see just a more descriptive um, areas of our recommendations that we have and the concerns that we have regarding the draft ordinance. Also, you can still submit your own comments and we would love for everyone to get involved and be engaged in this process. The website, excuse me, the email address is listed for you here, zoningupdate at glencounty-ga.gov. Please make sure that you submit um, any questions or concerns that you have regarding the draft ordinance. And also please feel free to email myself if there are any questions that you may have for Hannah or Megan, I can definitely direct those questions or comments to them as well. Again, Hannah is our coastal planning advocate. Her background is in planning. Also, Megan's background is in planning as well. That's why we greatly appreciate them for sharing their expertise regarding this entire process. Um, so again, we thank you for tuning in to our very first teach-in. We will have several more of these on various topics, but today we just wanted to um, talk to you specifically about the Glen County Zoning Draft Ordinance as that is currently underway and has been for quite some time. Um, and we want to make sure that people have a full understanding of zoning and why it is important for you to be engaged and knowledgeable about this process. So please make sure you visit our website, our website um, so that you can learn more about the Glen County Zoning Draft Ordinance and our recommendations and concerns regarding it. We greatly appreciate Hannah and Megan once again and their expertise, and we look forward to seeing you guys again during our next teaching.